seems that the hive mind has come up with a few new ways to empower Tyranid units. Let's take a look at the new and shiny synaptic link abilities that Nib players can add to their armies. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where today we're talking about a buff to Codex Tyranids with these new and really quite powerful synaptic link abilities. These rules again come from Warzone Octarius, the Rising Tide, alongside the High Fleet Leviathan supplement, Tyranid Crusade rules, and a bunch of reprinted rules from their Psychic Awakening supplement. It's kind of interesting to see a mechanic like this added in alongside a supplement book. It does feel like the sort of rules that would generally appear in a 9th edition codex, the paid for in points upgrades that Tyranids should get. But the fact that it's here along with the Crusade rules really implies to me that there's not going to be a Codex Tyranids for 9th edition for really quite some time yet. Not exactly the best news for Tyranid players, but I guess it's something to be using in the meantime. As it goes, I really do quite like this new mechanic. It feels fairly fluffy for the way you'd expect Tyranids to operate. So let's take a look at these pretty powerful new buffing abilities and how they work. So the new rules are called the Hive Mind Synaptic Link and are basically a new rule for Tyranids for any Hive Fleet. They aren't just locked to Leviathan or anything. Basically, each of these abilities is an individual points cost upgrade that you give to your synaptic creatures for around 10 or 15 points per choice, and each synapse creature has its own synaptic link ability. You don't get any choice between them, either you just choose to upgrade to that or you don't. Interestingly, the number of the abilities that you can take is limited to the battle size that you're playing, so you could have one of these abilities present in combat patrol, two in incursion, three in strike force, or four in onslaught. I feel that that's really quite good news for strike force games. I think that getting three of them in there is enough to get the good ones and then leave any other passable ones, even if you do have any more synapse creatures that you could upgrade with this. Basically, these synaptic link abilities are used by the model that bears them in the command phase and they can give the buff either to themselves or any other Tyranid unit from the same hive fleet that's within synaptic link range. You can't stack one unit with multiple different link abilities, so basically in the command phase you'd have to decide where these buffs are going to be handed out to. I'd say maybe the most fun and fluffy bit is the synaptic link range. You can either just broadcast the buff to any unit within 12 inches, or you can do an interesting kind of chaining effect where, say, if you're within 12 inches of another synaps creature, then you can kind of relay the buff through them and potentially chain the buff quite a long way away through various different synaps creatures all within 12 inches and potentially even buff a unit on the other side of the battlefield. Say, for example, in the diagram, the Brood Lord with the Master of the Shadows synaptic link ability. He can chain that through the Hive Tyrant and give it to the Gene Stealers, even though the Gene Stealers aren't actually within 12 inch range of the original Broodlord. I must say, I do think that the mechanic's really quite well thought out and pretty fluffy. The Tyranids are supposed to try and maintain a synaptic web to keep control of their organisms, and this gives you a really good reason to do so for added flexibility. So let's take a look at the abilities in question and which ones I think are probably going to be the strongest and most played. First up, we have Mastery of the Shadows for 15 points. That's the one that the Brood Lord gets, and I think this might be one of the strongest. It gives the unit being targeted both light and heavy cover, so plus one saves both in the shooting phase and in the fight phase. And I think that's pretty cool on big high save monstrous creatures who wouldn't normally be able to take advantage of either in game. If you do choose to use it on some more little guys though, if you use it on a non-monster unit, they also get the benefit of dense cover from attacks made from greater than 12 inches away. That's really quite a nice shooting debuff. Even if it was just used on a lowly gaunt horde holding an objective, getting up to a 5 plus save and minus 1 to hit are both really quite nice buffs against shooting and being shot off the board. Just adding an extra layer of defence to the unit that you think is going to get shot up the most next turn is really powerful, and I think that this is well worth 15 points if you're taking a brood lord. Next we have the Hive Tyrant 1, Malicious Direction. This one gives you an extra 3 inch to your pile and moves to a maximum of 6 inches. I'd say maybe this one's okay if you're really trying to stretch your movement out to the maximum. Perhaps if you're trying to get big squads of gene stealers all under combat or tagging other enemy units. But for me, 15 points does feel a bit steep for that. I kind of wish the Hive Tyrants one was a little bit more general purpose, seeing as they are supposed to be at the core of the army. Next up, we have the Maliceptor's Focal Essence buff. That's 15 points again. And the Maliceptor turns its Psychic Might into really quite a decent shooting buff. Wound rolls of 6 get an extra AP minus 1 and you can also re-roll damage rolls. Two really quite powerful shooting buffs there, though they are kind of linked to actually taking a Maliceptor in-game, as I'm not exactly convinced they're one of the strongest picks for the Tyranids right now. This certainly does give you a lot more point to having one of them in the battle line though. Next up we have Psychic Creep from the Neurothrope. This gives the unit that you're buffing a leadership debuff aura, 
basically a six inch aura of minus one leadership and minus combat attrition and that could potentially be a really quite wide reaching one particularly if you put it on a big horde that's about to get in combat with the enemy there's every chance you might be able to tag multiple different units and have that extra leadership and more models running away i think that could genuinely be useful in some cases though as always leadership is just a touch situational there's some armies that really don't care about it whatsoever next up for the turvigon we have weaponized gestation for 15 points, again, this is a really significantly powerful shooting buff. The unit that you've selected gets to re-roll wound rolls of 1 or 2 with ranged attacks, so unless you happen to be wounding your target on 2s already, that's usually going to be a big 33% increase to your unit's firepower. When you consider that that could be on things like Hive Guard or Exocrines, for 15 points, that's really quite a nice upgrade. Again, perhaps the main downside is being tied to the Turvigon, which you might not necessarily want in your list in the first place. If you are bringing a Turvigon along though, that seems pretty much an auto-include, provided you have a unit or two that you can use it on. Next up, the Trigon Prime brings Feed along, which allows you to fall back and charge again. I guess that could be pretty handy on the Trigon itself, if it does manage to make a charge and then does survive until the next turn. Maybe that's a touch more situational though, particularly as if you are using the Trigon's Deep Strike ability, it won't be on the board in the command phase. Next we have Unchecked Ferocity, a Tyranid Prime buff. Again, this one's 15 points, and it means that melee hits rolls of 6 auto-wound the enemy. Auto-wounding is really quite nice, and this one's a really useful buff on anything that's got very low-strength melee. Perhaps things like Hormagaunts or Gene Stealers with flurries of low-strength attacks. Bypassing the wound roll could be really quite nice against harder targets with toughness 5 or more. Again, that one seems like a perfectly reasonable pickup if you have got a unit that's going to be getting into combat. Perhaps one of the single easiest to use buffs, though, is the one for the Tyranid Warriors. Bioweapon Bond, this one's 15 points and it gives you a plus one to hit either in range or melee. This one is perhaps one of the very best on the list, getting a touch more accuracy exactly where you need it is easily worth 15 points, and Tyranid Warriors are really quite easy to include in the army as it is, just 51 points for a basic issue squad, going up to 66 with this upgrade. Even if they didn't do much more than sitting around guarding home field objectives, or slogging into the midfields to mix it up in melee on the midfield objectives, I think you could easily justify a small squad of them when they are bringing this buff along as well. You could have things like Hive Guard hitting on twos with their Ignore's line of sight weapons. The same for Gene Stealers in melee. Or maybe make some Devourer Termagants into something even more scary. Three shots at strength four for seven points really isn't too bad at all when you hit on threes and have the potential for shooting twice with a stratagem. I have a feeling that this one's going to be taking quite a lot and it does incentivize you to use at least a small squad of Tyranid Warriors in the list. Not that you couldn't try and max out the unit and make it work if you wanted to layer them with some buffs. Finally, we have a zone throat one called Psychic Channeling for 10 points. This one allows the unit that you buff to roll an extra d6 when you're casting powers and then discard one of the dice. For just 10 points, this is really quite a reliable boost to casting. And provided you think you can keep your zone throat safe for at least some of the game, then I think that this would yield you some good returns. Even if it just winds up saving you a command point on a failed cast, then it's basically done its job. Overall, for the points invested, I think that pretty much all of these are very decent, though I do feel that some of them are going to see a lot more play than others, just because they're easier to include in your army, by being usable on models that you might well have taken anyway. I think that Master of the Shadows is going to pop up really quite a lot on Broodlords, having pop-up extra durability is amazing, and Bioweapon Bond on the Tyranid Warriors, I think again is almost an auto-include, and you could easily justify a small unit of them just for that. Otherwise though, if you are taking Maliceptors or Turvigons, I think that both of their shooting buffs are very hard not to pick up, and the ones for the Tyranid Prime and the Zone Throbes both seem like good value as well. Overall, I'd say that these are most certainly a buff to the Tyranid Army, and certainly in combination with the Leviathan Supplement, I think there's a lot, going to be a lot of ways to make the Tyranids both more dangerous and more durable by combining these with the new Warlord traits and stratagems. Really quite a fun set of rules, and it's nice to see an army that's not doing quite so well get a decent shot in the arm. So let me know what you think of the Synaptic Link abilities down in the comments below. Which ones can you see yourself using for the Tyranids, and are there any that I've either overrated or underrated here? Finally, if you've been enjoying the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page that you can find down in the video description. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, feel free to check out the page down in the video description. In any case, an absolutely massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.